The stock market has been continuing on a very strong rally, which all initiated from a heavy rebound accompanied with a positive outlook on inflation and interest rates from Jerome Powell. However, just recently we learned that Moody's has lowered their US credit rating outlook, which is a major deal and it can have a significant negative impact on the markets, because the last two times it happened, investors did not like it. And on top of that, we have a ton of major economic data and inflation data set to be released, and investors are now weighing in on the possible results. So what's going on? Why did Moody's downgrade their outlook on the US credit rating, and how does this impact the markets, interest rates, and what effect does it have on the US dollar? There are so many pieces to the puzzle, and the impact they have on one another is rather hidden until you do some digging. So this is where things get really interesting. So to begin, the market is continuing on this unbelievably strong recovery rally with eight consecutive positive days, and we haven't seen such a rally since November of 2021. Right now, on a technical standpoint, when looking at the S&P 500 index chart, we have reached a key point of resistance, reaching the top of its downtrend. Actually, Friday is when we broke through it by a bit. You can see the red lines defining the lower highs and the lower lows that make up the downtrend in SPX, a clear channel. SPX has rallied to the upper red line, which is now at about 4,400, and after the strong rally just last week Friday, the index closed just above 4,415, so this gives investors a positive outlook potentially breaking the trend. Furthermore, the circle on the chart shows the gap that was left in September. Now, for those who don't know, a gap on a stock market chart occurs when the price of a security opens significantly higher or lower than its closing price from the previous trading session, creating a visible gap in the price action. And the reason this is important is because one common observation in technical analysis is that gaps in the stock market tend to get filled over time. This means that the price eventually retraces back to the level at which the gap occurred, closing the gap on the price chart. And now that the gap is closed, it would be another positive indicator for SPX. However, there's two major pieces of information that we urgently need to talk about, the first being Jerome Powell's comments from November 9th. To begin, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that he and his fellow policymakers are encouraged by the slowing pace of inflation, but are unsure whether they've done enough to keep the momentum going. And this comes a little more than a week after the central bank voted to hold the benchmark policy rates steady. He stated that the Federal Open Market Committee is committed to achieving a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to bring inflation down to 2% over time. We are not confident that we have achieved such a stance. So essentially, they're a little concerned that the progress that they're seeing with inflation, although very promising, is not solidified yet. And if they take a lighter stance towards interest rate hikes, or in other words, premature easing of monetary policy, they risk a rebound in inflation. This is what spooked investors on Thursday and broke the record eight-day winning streak, causing indexes to move sharply lower, with the S&P 500 closing the day down 0.81% and the Nasdaq down around 1%. Now, the 10-year Treasury yields closed the day sharply higher by around 3%. And as we all know, the 10-year treasury is a gauge for future expectations of interest rates. With the rise in 10-year treasury yields, investors price in expectations of higher interest rates. But it seems that traders completely shrugged off Powell's remarks the following day, because the Dow Jones Industrial Average advanced 1.15%, the S&P 500 climbed 1.56%, and the Nasdaq Composite added 2.05%, notching its best day since May. All 11 sectors of the S&P 500 were positive on Friday, but tech outperformed rising 2.6%. Microsoft even rose to all-time highs during the session, closing the day up 2.5%. Analysts have mentioned that even with Powell's commentary on Thursday, for the most part that's been shrugged off as sounding too hawkish. People are not really convinced that the Fed is going to be raising rates going forward. But what's really interesting is that the 10-year treasuries did not move. So I feel that there's something there that we need to pay close attention to. The question is, will this rally continue into next week? Well, there might be one thing standing in the way, and that is the downgrade in the credit rating outlook from Moody's. And this is especially important because the last time a credit rating downgrade occurred, investors were not happy about it. So let me explain. Last week Friday, the US was threatened with the loss of its last top AAA credit rating as Moody's Investor Service signaled it was inclined to downgrade the nation because of wider budget deficits and political polarization. Out of the three largest credit rating services, Moody's is the last one to maintain the United States at a AAA rating, but now that may be disappearing. The rating assessor lowered the outlook from stable to negative, although still maintaining the nation's rating at AAA, the highest investment grade notch. They've said that amid higher interest rates, without measures to reduce spending or boost revenue, 
fiscal deficits will likely remain very large, significantly weakening debt affordability. And this is a direct quote from Moody's. So what does this all mean? Well, let's go through it in detail and talk about how it impacts the markets and the US dollar. A fiscal deficit occurs when the government's expenses exceed the revenue in a given period. In other words, the government is spending more money than it's bringing in through taxes and other sources of revenue. And as a result, the government often needs to borrow more money to cover its spending, and they do this by issuing debt securities. As the level of debt increases, so do the interest payments on that debt. And if these interest payments become a substantial burden on the government's budget, it could be considered as a weakening of debt affordability, which then has a domino effect on everything else. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Now, Fitch Ratings, which is one of the three largest credit rating companies, just recently downgraded the US credit rating in early August of this year and said that the slight downgrade was due to a steady deterioration in standards of governance. What's interesting is that the US government objected the decision with the White House issuing a statement expressing strong disagreement. Meanwhile, US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that the downgrade was arbitrary and based on outdated data. And now we have another credit rating agency that is looking to do the exact same thing. So clearly it is not an unpopular decision. Within two years, the US has two of the largest credit rating agencies downgrading the country's credit rating. So the main problem investors need to urgently pay attention to is how the markets reacted to the credit rating downgrade we saw in the beginning of August. The Dow closed 1% lower, the S&P 500 fell 1.4%, and the Nasdaq dropped 2.2%, marking its worst performance since February of 2023. And the 10-year treasury yield hit its highest level since November of 2022. S&P Global Ratings, the other major credit rating firm, downgraded the US's credit rating back in 2011 during an earlier debt limit fight. And on August 8th of that year, a day now referred to as Black Monday, the S&P 500 fell nearly 7% in one day. In the month that followed, the index lost another 5.7%, and in September, it lost another 7.2%. So clearly, when there's a downgrade, it has a major negative impact on the markets. Granted, the first time that it happened, the impact was a lot more pronounced. So the question is, why does a credit rating downgrade on the US economy have such a significant impact, and what does this mean for interest rates? You see, the credit rating of a country, particularly one as economically influential as the United States, reflects the credit worthiness of its government debt. So these credit ratings assess how likely the rating firms believe that the US is able to do good on its debt obligations. A downgrade can shake confidence in the broader economic outlook, potentially leading to reduced business investment and consumer spending. This loss of confidence can lead to a strong selling pressure in the stock market as investors reevaluate their portfolios and risk exposures. A credit rating downgrade can also put pressure on the US dollar as it could be perceived as a sign of weakened economic fundamentals. Now, a depreciating currency can impact multinational companies, affecting their earnings when translated back into the US dollar, and this in turn can influence stock prices. And lastly, it can lead to an increase in interest rates for US government debt. Essentially, increasing interest rates on everything from mortgages to credit cards as part of a domino effect due to the federal government being seen as riskier at taking on loans. So to put that in simple terms, it all comes down to financial obligation. If the US government fails to make scheduled payments on its debt, or in other words, defaults on its debt, then there could be severe consequences. So as for the markets, granted the credit rating hasn't been downgraded yet, but the markets may start pricing in the effect soon. Now, on top of all of that, we do have CPI data and PPI data set to be released this week, and this will be a major catalyst for market direction. Considering that last month's CPI data was all higher than expectations, except for the core data, which came in on par with expectations, the hope is that all of the metrics do come in as expected with no sudden surprises. You can be certain that if any of those metrics come in hotter than expected, primarily core CPI and core PPI, then the Federal Reserve will be more inclined to maintain high interest rates for a longer period of time. And the markets will see a strong downward pressure accompanied with an upward pressure on 10-year treasury yields, pushing the bond prices even lower. So investors are eagerly waiting to see what the results are going to be, but without a doubt, the rating downgrade from Moody's does put a downward pressure on the overall outlook of the markets. 
And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.